The classic children's novel, A Little Princess, being the whole story of Sarah Crewe now told for the first time was published in 1905. In this work, Frances Hodgson Burnett, a celebrated Anglo-American novelist and playwright, expanded her earlier novella, Sarah Crewe, or What Happened at Miss Minchin's, which had originally been serialized in St. Nicholas magazine. Burnett explains in her preface to A Little Princess that when she wrote a play in 1902 based on her 1888 novella, she discovered characters such as Becky, Lottie, and Melchizedek, who had been left out in 1888 because the imaginary characters did not mention themselves to me at first. After the success of this play, Burnett's publisher requested that she add those missing characters to her novella and expand it as a full-length novel making the novel her third work involving Sarah Crewe. The novel is set in a boarding school in late Victorian England and reflects the era's social structures, including the protagonist's father's role in colonizing India, the exploitation of diamond mines, and the social hierarchy rooted in the maintenance of a servant class, and typical literary devices such as a moralizing tone and the trope of the orphan who manages, through unlikely circumstances and after much suffering, to reach a happy ending. In addition to being adapted for the stage, the novel has been the basis of two films. The 1939 film adaptation, The Little Princess, starred Shirley Temple as Sarah and is noted for being the child star's first appearance in Technicolor. Director Alfonso Cuaron released his remake of the film, A Little Princess, in 1995 and changed the setting to World War I. Both film versions significantly revised the novel's plot. Burnett was English, but when she was three, her family emigrated to Tennessee due to difficult financial circumstances after her father's death. She began writing as a teenager to help support her family. Burnett also wrote the popular children's books Little Lord Fauntleroy, 1886, which was also adapted to the stage, and The Secret Garden, 1911. She also wrote several novels for adults that were bestsellers in their era. Seven-year-old Sarah Crew voyages from India with her father to enroll in Miss Minchin's select seminary for young ladies in England. Sarah's mother died when she was born. Sarah was raised in India by her loving father, Captain Ralph Crew, a wealthy English military officer. The English considered the Indian climate unhealthy for young British girls, so the British families who lived there typically sent their children to be educated in England. Since Sarah and her father adore each other, they are both deeply sad when the time comes for their separation. Captain Crewe impulsively shops with Sarah before leaving England, purchasing a wardrobe for her that is too luxurious and costly for a child. Captain Crewe also pays extra money to the schoolmistress, Miss Minchin, so that Sarah can enjoy a private bedroom, a sitting room, a personal maid, and a carriage with a pony. Miss Minchin is outwardly respectable, but inwardly greedy and unkind. She flatters Sarah, knowing that her wealth and elegant appearance will enhance the school's reputation. However, Miss Minchin secretly resents Sarah's pampered prosperity. Sarah is an extremely intelligent and imaginative child whose privileges do not cause her to act grand or be self-centered. Sarah is generous and kind, possessing a maturity beyond her years. Conceiving of a person's circumstances as an accident beyond the individual's control, Sarah is able to imagine herself in another's position and, therefore, be empathetic. Sarah particularly helps the most downtrodden people in the school, Ermengarde, who is considered the school dunce, Lottie, who is the baby of the school, and Becky, who is the lowest-ranking servant at the school. Sarah is repeatedly compared to a princess because of her luxuriously clothed appearance. However, she decides to secretly pretend that she is a princess as a way of ensuring that she will behave well, remain courteous, and do kind things for people. Sarah believes that being a princess has nothing to do with what you look like or what you have. It is only to do with what you think of and what you do. Sarah receives an amazing gift from her father for her 11th birthday. The last doll arrives with an elaborate wardrobe that was custom designed in Paris. Sarah's lavish birthday party at Miss Minchin's is interrupted by the news that Captain Crew died suddenly after losing his fortune by investing in diamond mines. He trusted a dear friend from his school days who persuaded him to become a partner in his enterprises and then, apparently, betrayed him. When Miss Minchin learns that Sarah is orphaned and impoverished, she is enraged. Miss Minchin paid for Sarah's doll and the extravagant party, expecting reimbursement from Captain Crew. 
Miss Minchin's cruelty is revealed after the death, as she removes all Sarah's possessions except some old clothing and Sarah's doll, Emily, and forces her to live in a cold, dingy attic room. Miss Minchin orders Sarah about as if she were a servant, ends her lessons in the schoolroom, and sends her out on errands during terrible weather. Over a two-year period, Sarah is terribly mistreated by Miss Minchin and the kitchen staff. Although Miss Minchin's younger sister, Amelia, disagrees with the way that Sarah is treated, she is too timid to object. Sarah is often deprived of meals, worked beyond exhaustion, and clothed in ill-fitting, threadbare clothing, even in the snowy winter. The three girls Sarah befriended during her fortunate circumstances, Ermengarde, Lottie, and Becky, maintain their devotion to her after her misfortune. Sarah relies on her vivid imagination to endure her hardships, pretending she is a prisoner in the Bastille with Becky or a princess in disguise. Sarah maintains her standard of inner princess behavior by continuing to be courteous to those who insult her and generous to those who are even hungrier than she. One day, she finds a four-pence coin in the mud and uses it to buy buns at a bakery. Despite her own hunger, she gives five of her six buns to a girl in the street who is begging and starving. When the bakery shop's owner witnesses Sarah's incredible act of selfless compassion, she is so emotionally moved that she invites the girl who was begging into her shop, giving her a job and a home. When Mr. Carrisford, an English gentleman who lived in India, moves into the house next door to Miss Minchin's school, Sarah is reminded of the land of her birth. Unbeknownst to Sarah, Mr. Carrisford was Captain Crewe's friend and partner in the diamond mines. Mr. Carrisford agonizes that Captain Crew died believing that he betrayed and ruined him. However, Mr. Carrisford was ill in the hospital at that time, and the fortune of the diamond mines was restored later. He is haunted by a dream in which Crew asks him to find his lost daughter. Mr. Carrisford's health is suffering because of his guilt. He sends his lawyer, Mr. Carmichael, to try to find Crew's daughter so he can restore her fortune. He knows only that Mr. Crew had a child whose mother was French, so he assumes she was sent to a Paris school. Sarah encounters Ram Das, Mr. Carrisford's Indian servant, when they view the sunset from neighboring attic windows. Ram Das is delighted when friendly Sarah speaks in Hindustani to him. When he captures his escaped pet monkey, he observes Sarah's impoverished living conditions. Ram Das notices Sarah's unusual compassion for all living things and he tells his employer about her situation. Together, the men construct a plan to carry hot suppers and other comforts across the roof to Sarah's attic room while she sleeps. Sarah's morale and health improve when she realizes that she has a mysterious friend who sends restorative gifts. When Sarah receives two packages addressed to her containing costly, warm clothing from an anonymous benefactor, Miss Minchin becomes fearful that Sarah might have a wealthy relative and starts to treat her better allowing her to attend classes again. One night, the monkey again escapes to Sarah's attic room. When Sarah visits Mr. Carrisford's house the next morning to return the animal, her identity as Captain Crew's daughter is finally discovered. Sarah learns that Mr. Carrisford is her father's school friend and has looked for her for two years. Sarah will now be a wealthy heiress, as Mr. Carrisford restores her father's lost fortune from the diamond mines to her. When Miss Minchin threatens that Sarah must return to her school, Mr. Carrisford's lawyer informs her that Sarah will remain with her guardian, Mr. Carrisford, instead. Sarah's friend Ermengarde receives a letter from Sarah inviting her to visit and relating the marvelous news. Sarah does not forget the scullery maid Becky, inviting her to be her attendant at Mr. Carrisford's residence. Mr. Carrisford becomes a father figure to Sarah, and he regains his health. Remembering her hunger, the wealthy Sarah returns to the bakery where she bought the buns, arranging to pay for food to be handed out to needy children. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.